We usually think of gravity as a force between objects with mass. It's easy to see how this force works by stepping on a scale to see how much you weigh. The number on the scale represents the Earth's gravity on your mass or your weight on planet Earth when it comes to gravity in the cosmos. We can imagine the sun's gravity keeping the planets in their orbits, and we all know about the strong gravitational pull near a black hole. The so-called force of gravity is easy to understand in gravity might seem like a simple thing after all, but things are different in the current age as we know now that gravity as a force is only a small part of a more complex phenomenon thanks to the general theory of relativity. But before we get into that, it's time for a little physics 101. Everyone is familiar with Newton who was a veritable demigod of physics during his time and the story about the apple falling on his head. Well, that didn't really happen. The truth is Newton saw an apple people fall from a tree and was in a contemplative mood at that moment. He wondered why the apple fell straight towards the ground and not sideways or in another direction. He presumed that a force of gravity between two bodies pulled them towards each other with a magnitude directly proportional to their mass and also inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them. The path that the bodies take will be the shortest to minimize energy used, therefore a straight line and short Newton believed in apple falls because a gravitational force accelerates it towards the ground. Newton probably thought there was something missing from his theory, though, because it said he wasn't completely satisfied with it. This is because he originally thought of the force of gravity as a push. Not a pull little did Newton know that he was partially right about this, but his theory of gravity was accepted as gospel that the magical pull was an essential property of mass, the theory that withstood and obscured the truth. For the next 400 years, that is, until Albert Einstein, Another formidable genius came along in 1905 and presented his general theory of relativity while working as a Swiss patent clerk. His challenge to Isaac Newton's theory was either ridiculed or ignored completely because his ideas seemed too radical to be possible. Everything in a gravitational field falls at the same rate, which is essential to understanding general relativity. However, Galileo was the first to determine that, in the absence of an atmosphere, all objects released simultaneously will fall at the same rate regardless of their mass. David Scott, an Apollo 15 astronaut, conducted a famous experiment on the moon to test this theory simultaneously. This is known as the equivalent principle. So why do the two objects fall together and land at the same time? Because according to Einstein's theory, gravity is not a force between two objects with mass. Rather, gravity is the warping of space and time in the presence of objects with mass. If there is no force acting on the objects, they will travel in a straight line. Moonwalker astronaut Scott dropped a hammer and a feather, and they both glided to the ground and hit the ground at the same time. According to Einstein's theory, matter warps not only the fabric of space but also time, which is referred to as space-time, and any object in space warps the space-time. He also believed that smaller objects are pushed down by the space above them rather than being pulled on by more massive objects. The four dimensions of continuum space-time are time, length, width, and height. The more massive an object is, the more the space surrounding it is warped. According to Einstein, the reason planets orbit stars and fruits fall from trees is because they are traveling along gravity-related curves in the space-time continuum. An excellent way to understand how this works is to picture the Earth on a space-time grid. You can see how the Earth's mass warps space-time and produces a kind of gravity, pulling everything in its path including the moon, towards us. The moon's mass also warps space-time, but the gravitational field between it and the Earth is insufficient to pull the moon toward us. Instead, it acts more like an apple falling from a tree. The sun also has a massive gravity well that prevents everything in our solar system from launching into space. By launching spacecraft to diverge from their launch course and accelerate, we have also been able to gain insight into how gravity wells around planets function in our solar system. To calculate gravitational force, engineers exploited distorted space-time or the gravitational pull of other planets in our solar system. The closer an item is to a planet and, consequently, its gravitational pull, the faster it will start to travel. This is known as the national slingshot. What it all comes down to is that objects in the universe are attracted to each other because space-time is bent and curved the closer they are to the objective. Mass. The faster they will accelerate, but what about this so-called gravitational field we were talking about earlier? Is it not a force? A gravitational field is actually the force field that exists in space around every object with mass. The moon has a smaller gravitational field than the planet because of its mass. 
The Earth has a much stronger gravitational field than the Moon because of its mass, but in space, a gravitational field exists almost everywhere, with everything floating in space above our heads. It might be easy to believe there is no gravitational field at work in orbit around our big blue planet, but even the International Space Station feels the gravity of Earth. The surprising thing is that the effective gravity in orbit around the planet is nearly the same as the one on the surface of the planet. In fact, it's about 90 times as much in orbit as on the surface of the planet. So if you weighed 100 kilograms on Earth and had a space ladder that reached all the way to the space station, you'd weigh about 90 kilograms up there. But wait a minute, if there is gravity in space around the planet, why do astronauts look like they're floating around in zero? Gravity? The reason astronauts appear to be floating in space is because everything, including the International Space Station, is falling together simultaneously in the vacuum of space. This phenomenon, known as microgravity, makes it appear as though people and objects are weightless. If everything falls uniformly, regardless of mass, then an astronaut is free-floating in space. A free-falling astronaut in the gravitational field of a massive body and someone far from any gravitational source would experience the same thing. In fact, everything in space, including the satellites of the International Space Station, is constantly falling toward Earth, and while it is falling, it is also traveling quickly, about 28,000 kilometers per hour. From the Earth's gravitational pull, there are several ways to demonstrate that Einstein was correct when he said that mass objects distort space-time. The Earth's surface has a gravitational acceleration of 9.81 meters per second. Nothing about the planet's core causes gravity to draw you and other objects toward the Earth. Instead, it pulls all mass-containing objects downward. Space-time can be bent and curved, and gravity is the cause of this curvature. Therefore, if you could somehow travel to the center of the planet, there would be no gravity because you would be away from the curvature of space-time at the center of an object with mass and floating around the planet's core weightless. However, as soon as you started to travel back to the surface, you would start to feel the curvature of space-time from the mass of the Earth, and the effect of that curve on gravity would start to grow stronger. Obviously, we'll need to send a probe to the center of the Earth to confirm this, but there is another way to demonstrate how space-time is warped by gravity. A phenomenon known as gravitational lensing is one of them. This phenomenon, known as gravitational lensing, occurs when a massive celestial body bends space-time sufficiently that the light surrounding it appears visibly bent. However, if you were looking through a camera lens, gravitational lensing would occur when a massive object, such as a galaxy, warps the surrounding space into rings of light. Interestingly, this has enabled us to discover other galaxies and space objects that we otherwise would not have been able to see. The well-known example of Einstein's cross depicts a gravitationally lensed quasar that is situated directly behind a galaxy center. For images of the quasar appear in the foreground as a result of the galaxy's strong gravitational lensing in the middle. While general relativity may seem to have it all figured out, and there is plenty of evidence to support it, the main issue with it as it stands is that it conflicts with quantum mechanics. Although there is currently no theory that is universally accepted and supported by experience, researchers are aware that Einstein's theory eventually breaks down and ceases to function in black holes. To test this theory, scientists used three enormous telescopes in Hawaii to observe a blue star known as SO2 approach the black hole at its closest distance. This is known as quantum gravity. In Sagittarius, if Einstein's theory of relativity were correct, a star in the center of the Milky Way galaxy would experience a 16-year orbit around a black hole, which would warp space-time and cause light waves to stretch out as the black hole's gravity drained away energy, causing the star's light to shift from blue to red. Just as Einstein predicted, the star began to glow red. If it had been any other color, it would have suggested a completely different model of gravity. At this point, scientists are searching for a curvature of space-time so extreme that the theory of general relativity fails. They think that within the next 10 years, general relativity will be pushed to the brink and another genius will emerge and demonstrate if you liked the video where we discovered something fascinating and new about the cosmos, you can learn more about it here. Thank you for watching, and please subscribe to remain tuned.